Have you heard about Bitcoin? Not Bitcoin, but Bitcoin. Bravo, India, Papa, Coin. Bitcoin is a new cryptocurrency that you can start mining today for free on ordinary computers. Unlike most altcoins, Bitcoin is not a clone of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is based on entirely new, more recent, and better code called Crypto Note. So unlike Bitcoin, Bitcoin has truly untraceable transactions, does not require specialized mining rigs, and has adaptive limits. Plus, Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency covered by the BIPCOT No Government License. This allows use and reuse by anyone except governments and government agents. If you're still kicking yourself in the head for not getting in on the ground floor of Bitcoin, start mining, using, and trading Bitcoin today. Not a guarantee. Mining Bitcoin costs you nothing but the electricity to run your computer. And we already take Bitcoin for stickers and buttons. Go to Bitcoin.org. That's Bitcoin.org. Once again, that's Bravo India Papa Coin.org. If you're this angry and, uh, I don't know, hateful towards your neighbors at 40, I mean, I, I honestly can't imagine what A's I've been like. angry and hateful at my neighbors since I was a little kid. Are you kid, just going to sh- fire a bazooka at any location, at anybody that just makes a sound? I have not with? shot anybody yet over this. I don't think yet. it's going to happen now. <laughs> yes. He, well, yes. What, he, what he's going to do, what he's gonna there, do is Jeremy. he's going to get a hold of a recreational McNuke from <laughs> the local McNuke. McWarlord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because by then we'll all be living in Ankapistan, so we'll be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 100th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Yay! Yeehaw! As All always, right. As always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So this week, we are brought to you by Discord and also brought to you by the upcoming Freedom B&B app, which is a Ben Stone project. Ben, the bad Quaker, is someone we've had on the show before, and as we talked about uh, last week, hopefully is going to be joining us next week. But the project is up and running, and the Indiegogo campaign is is on, and all that information can be found at hobosymbols.com. So go check that out. I'll make sure to put that in the show notes. Uh, So I am Jeremy. I am joined, as always, by Dave. What's up? What's up? And we have Andre here again with us this week. What's up, Andre? Uh, just another wonderful day on uh, Seeds of Liberty podcast. Thanks for having me on. Spectacular. And this week, for our 100th episode, we have a very special guest, someone who our longtime listeners should recognize. He, of course, is our friend and former co-host, Mr. Danilo Cuellar. Hey, Danilo. How are you, my friend? <laughs> hey, guys. Glad to be on, um, and very excited to be part of the 100th episode. We just had to have you back on for it, man. As soon as Jeremy said it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. And as a guy who's been following the podcast for you know a little while now, I just want to say it's an honor to be on the podcast with you, Danilo. You're, you do great work, and you put out great content, so it's it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I appreciate that. I uh I got. Uh, I'm not. I'm not exactly up to date. As Jeremy knows, <laughs> I'm not exactly the quickest to uh, put out the shows. But uh, I, uh, I uh, have my own pace. <laughs> well, anything has to be better than what I do. I, 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 I'm one of these guys. Like once every so often, I'll just sit down and just jam out podcasts for like ten hours straight, and then I'll just get my fill and just be done with it. Well, I think he's talking about putting out his own podcast. Oh. The, the Nilla takes forever to do that type of stuff. Right. <laughs> uh, well, I've been liking those videos you put out every so often. They're very inspirational, uh, very uh, kind. You know, like everyone wants to be upset and f- trying to get everyone fired up and riled up these days, it feels like. And uh, your message of kindness and niceness and stuff like that, is, is, I like <laughs> it. I like it, to say the least. I, that's why I always share all your stuff, man. Yeah, exactly. Same here. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I um I try to focus on um yeah, being inspiring, uplifting, positive um solutions um because yeah, I think this um these topics can get a little bit gloomy and get people down and I think um it's important that we show people that this philosophy makes us happier, more content human beings 
and I think that will make it more attractive to others mm -hmm. uh, when we convey it. So that's my goal. Yeah, you've you started doing those a couple months ago, right? You started doing like short was, short videos it, again. I give all the credit to you guys. You guys are the one. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I think it was Dave. I think. <laughs> yeah, well, we we had well, talked to you about it, and you had, you had said that you know you 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 left you left this this podcast because because of time constraints and stuff, and with everything right. with the kids that you were doing, and you were ha you were getting so backlogged with peaceful anarchism as it was, but then mm. you kept saying you know you you're trying to find ways to get content out, and you didn't know how, and both of us were just like, you've done these little videos in the past. Why not just do them? Just 10 minutes, it's all it takes. If, if your right. time constraints is the issue, then find 10 minutes, views. 10, 15 Every, minutes of your time. Up. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, we're very our, lucky. Considering that, our <laughs> our niche, uh, you get pretty good views. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're right. I, I'm able to do it, it once a week. It's, it's, a, it's basically a basic goal of mine per week is one video a week, and I've been pretty consistent with that. And You're, you're um, slowly inspiring me to do it as well. I just... Yeah, I just definitely. Been, I mean, it's, I've been I mean, thinking of things to talk about. I and get, that, you ahead, say yeah. stuff, and I'm like, I well, wish for five seconds I could talk as beautifully as Danilo. Well, do, do you strip <laughs> no. those out at all, or do you, do you just shoot from the hip on all of them? No, those are all impromptu. I, I mean, I have a, um, I have a subject um, that I start talking about, but uh, after that, I just go with it. And being outdoors is really inspiring for me. Um, uh, although lately, it's been freezing. And, and <laughs> yeah, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know and that. So I've been, it's insane. I've been forced indoors, uh, which is not as inspiring. Um, but um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, n never really scripted. It's just, um, you know, I, I try to speak slow and intentional, and um, and um, yeah, just just convey my thoughts as clearly as I can. Uh, and, and also now I'm kind of doing more anecdotal stuff, like what's been happening in my life and how I relate that to um, anarchism, volunteerism, capitalism. And I just, I'm just, as I'm looking for it, I'm getting, I'm getting many different um, um, topics of inspiration to do these videos. And so I have so many topics now. <laughs> it's like each, each week, I'm like, I feel like I can do more than one a week now. I got so many topics. So I, I think my hardest challenge is staying on topic and you do that well. Like you'll do a 10 minute episode or a 10 minute or a 20 minute or a 15 minute video. And it's just bam, right on target. You know, if, just think about it for a second. If I do it, it's going to be – by the time the thing's ending, it's going to be about the Illuminati and aliens or something. So uh, so basically you're Alex Jones is what – Yeah, you're I've got to find a way to stop myself from going Alex Jones on the whole thing. Uh, and, and that's why I haven't really been doing videos is because I, I watch the videos I put out, and I'm like, man, I just kind of ramble sometimes uh, – or not ramble, but go down rabbit holes that can bury the lead very hard. And, and you stay on target, Danilo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, thank you. It's it's um, I mean, it's like like it, like anything. You got to practice. And you know, in the beginning, I I kind of sucked, and uh, I feel like I uh, I've gotten into my groove a little bit and speaking slower and and not tripping. I think I think that's a a big thing that you, Jeremy, have been uh, um, uh, telling me about is like you know, got to speak slow and you know, with the, focus on limiting the you know the likes and the ums and all the um, those little excess words that we use um and so yeah <laughs> <laughs> just like that exactly <laughs> yeah no that's that's exactly true and it's it's funny you mentioned that because well. i've had to do that and focus on that ever since i've started being part of the podcast here on seeds of liberty and when i was on radiologic podcast with uh, merrick it's the same thing you you have to catch yourself not using those filler words mm -hmm. and it's a it's such a hard habit to break too yeah it is. It, it takes a minute to break them. Well, they're they're well, they're, yeah, they're crutch. Everybody has crutches, and it's easy to fall back in it. I think it was Jim Jesus who was talking about it once. I'm pretty sure it was him who said that he got over them by actually just not saying anything, like recognizing that he was about to do it and catching himself. Because the reason that most people use them is to fill, because you're think you're trying to think ahead and trying to think of what the next mm -hmm. thing you're going to say is, so you'll mm -hmm. put in an um or a like, you know, and draw it out. Yeah, you don't want to drop into silence. So, you're but just, he actually you fill it with something. Yeah, he. I think it was him who said he actually corrected himself by kind of letting the silence happen, and it could almost be uncomfortable for other people who were listening, but he didn't care. And it was yeah. just training himself to like, so you don't want to have the silence. So okay, now I got to get rid of the silence. But it wasn't just going to that crutch, you know, to that crutch word right away. But it's tough. I mean, I still catch myself doing it, and I listen to the show multiple times because we do it, uh, and then I edit it, yeah. and then we, 
and yeah. then I edit it, you know, and then I go through the editing process and I and yeah. I hear all of our likes and ums and I'm just like, yeah. and I smack myself in the head repeatedly, but it's tough. <laughs> I think. Well, I think I think I had the idea of that, um, you know, when you're on radio, they say dead dead air is the enemy of radio. Oh, yeah. sure, on radio, that's you know? one thing. Right, so I I always think about that, and uh, and I but when I look back at my my videos, my ten uh, short videos, they, there are a good amount of of pauses and spaces of silence, mm-hmm. um, and um, yeah, and, and I don't edit those out either. I just leave, I just leave those in, and I think they I I, I, I like the, the I like the natural feel of it. Like yeah. if sometimes we look at a jump cut video, it's just it just feels too. Um, artificial, unnatural. It's just like machine gun talking. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So it's a product. It's a product right, of what right. it ends up being. Well, you know, people are sh- short attention spanned these days, and if you have all this stuff where people can't essentially just jam through the content real quick and get on to the next content, they're going to move along. And that's just on certain spectrums, so to say. So like on Facebook, it's a little different. On Twitter, it's a little different. But I think uh, the the general aspect of everything is putting out good content that is logical and coherent, and Danilo does that. Yeah, I think I have like um, 33 videos so far uh, of the short ones, and um, yeah, I can't believe that I've done so many already. I just I'm just doing once a week. I'm trying to be consistent with it. Um, yeah, I can't but... wait to the summertime to get back outside to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're get, you're getting a decent amount of reach with those, right? Or you see you're seeing a, a good influx of numbers to your page by doing it, or or what? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I usually get like 2,000 views, um, and and that's of course I have all these pages I share too, so that really helps a lot. Uh, like I got a lot of a good amount of pages. People are. Uh, uh, sharing them too, um, and I'm at, I'm now on the uh, everythingvoluntary.com with Skylar Collins. He hmm. he puts he puts my content out on his newsletter, uh, so that's really nice. Oh, well, Skylar, yeah, we know we know Skylar. We had him on cool. way back when, somewhere in the 20s Episode or 30s, 19 or 20, right? Somewhere, right? There, right. Yes. So, yeah. what uh, other than doing videos and being a badass? Uh, what's <laughs> I, we we me and Jeremy know you just moved, but uh. Do you want to fill in everybody on like what's been going on in your life? Maybe catch everybody up that has uh, hasn't heard from you in a while. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I, I stopped doing season three. I think in the last year in August, I think, right? Um, and yeah, yeah I mean, I'm con- yeah, the end of the summer, and, and I'm, uh, I mean, I continue to do my guests, um, and I've had some fascinating people on. Um, let's see, I had uh, Mary Rewert. Uh, PhD. I haven't posted that one yet. Oh, I was gonna um, say I don't remember that one. I'd love yeah, to hear yeah. from Mary. Yeah, these, the, yeah, these are the, the people I haven't had on yet. I, I mean, I haven't edited a post yet. I've had um, uh, the philosopher, uh, the the Asian woman, um, and then I've had. I don't, um, know, I don't know her. Um, yeah, the philosopher. She she's got her small channel, YouTube channel. She was on uh, actually Anarchist. Jeff Burke interviewed her. Um, that's right. Oh, I kind of was inspired to. Oh, out okay. To I know. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. The yeah, philosopher. Yeah. Yeah, the Asian. Yeah, the Asian woman. Wait, um, did she spell it F A U X? Philosopher. P H O. No, it's P H O. Like oh, a quote. Oh, like thing okay. Because like, um, I was like, is somebody the, actually the, the Vietnamese noodles? I started using that term recently. I'm like, is somebody else really using that already? I'm like, gosh darn it! I thought I was being clever. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. And there's nothing you're, new you're under not. the sun, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. So we're uh, Andre. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but you know Mary, that was great. Mary Ruber, she's she's a wonderful person. Uh, she's been in this scene for a long time. Yes, I like, and, I've read a lot of her. Like she writes a lot of articles and stuff, right? And yeah, read, and, books and, too, and, obviously, right? and books too. And she's been on like Stefan Molyneux and different places all all over the. And um, um, Louis Mises interviewed her, Emancipated Human. And she just her her message. I'm also very much inspired by her. You know, her, her big thing is libertarianism is the best expression of love uh, yeah. of your neighbor. Yeah. You know that um, if you truly love your neighbor, you wouldn't advocate for their um, for violence against them or for or for theft. Or you know, you would advocate yeah. for their freedom. Um, and that completely makes sense. You know that if if we want freedom for ourselves, we must necessarily want it for our uh, our neighbors, right? And um, yeah. anyone I mean, anyone it, else? I don't know. People I don't, know if... don't realize that w- w- this isn't king land anymore. Like if you put a noose around someone's neck, you're essentially putting it on yours with democracy. So unless you're trying to become some feudal lord, uh, I would not involve myself with a state. You know. <laughs> I don't. I, I well, 
As as far as her message, I mean, I, I, I do like her message, although I don't know if it necessarily has, I mean, I guess it could have to do with love, but I mean, I can't stand most of my neighbors. I still wouldn't wish any of that stuff, <laughs> I still wouldn't wish any of that stuff upon them anyway. I'll still, I'll still, I'll still, I'll still offer them the same. Jeremy, the quintessential curmudgeon. If you're this angry and, uh, I don't know, hateful towards your neighbors at 40. I mean, I, I honestly can't imagine what 80s I've been like. angry and hateful bazooka? at my neighbors since I was a little kid. Are you kid, just going to sh- fire a bazooka at any location, at anybody that just makes a sound? I have not with? shot anybody yet over this. I don't think yet. it's going to happen now. <laughs> yes. He, well, yes. What, he, what he's going to do, what he's gonna do there, is Jeremy. he's going to get a hold of a recreational McNuke from the local <laughs> McWarlord. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because by then we'll all be living in Ankapistan, so we'll be able to do that. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be wonderful. 40 years. All right. Well, uh, you heard it here first on the Seeds of Liberty podcast, and Ankapistan <laughs> will be full-fledged and apparently in force by, what would that be? Shit. M- McDonald's with machine guns. So uh, 2060. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Let's just, just round it out to 2060. I so by 2060, far. you'll be able to purchase recreational McNukes. From McDonald's. <laughs> Trademark. Copyright. <laughs> you'll be able to just walk into McDonald's, McNukes. get a Happy Meal. And a nuke. Tactical. You know, I think I think this is a, g- a great topic because um, so many people, you know, have this idea that um, well, no, not everyone's going to be an angel if there's um, anarchism or you know if the state disappears. So oh, how are you going to pr- protect yourself against that? And 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 you know, I think our response or my response would be that it it, it doesn't it doesn't hinge upon that. It just it just it just it's a moral statement that you know there are no exceptions to morality. It doesn't matter what badge or costume you wear, and and so it, it, you know it, it's all about accountability and personal responsibility for your actions, right? Mm-hmm. So if you if you do see an injustice, then you can take action, and and most anarchist volunteers do. They take matters into their own and hands. Shove a part. recreational McNuke up somebody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the other thing I'd like to add to that is, I mean, I mean and I agree with you. It, it really is. It's it's a point of making a moral stand and being consistent about your, your ethics. Mm-hmm. But the other point I, I, I like to point out and the other one that I, I really harp on a lot when this conversation comes up because that objection does come up a ton is what would you rather have? Would you rather have you know onesies and twosies? Yeah, somebody will most likely be robbed. Murders will still happen. People will still be unhinged and psychotic. But do you want to have it to where those incidents are isolated and few and rare or do you want to have a system in place that essentially institutionalizes those behaviors do you want to have it widespread do you want to have a organization of people who have the ability to do these things with impunity where it's expected that these things will happen Hmm. yeah i mean which which is really worse is it really worse that to randomly get mugged maybe on the street or you to know for a fact that you're going Andre, to be robbed fine, consistently. Mm-hmm. You just you take know? the kids, so. Andre. It's fine. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's fine. Just if you want to sleep tonight knowing that you hate the kids. That's, I mean, that's, that's okay. Well, the, the, okay, it's, it's the kids, the roads, the old people, and the infirm, right? My flag, and then my tradition. Yes. And it, it, yeah. goes down, it goes everything but, hey, I don't want a coercive monopoly dictating what everyone does. What does that have to do with fuck all about your tradition? Other than you must hate we've been traditionally enslaved, let's keep it going. I don't get it, you know? Like, why don't we? Yeah, that's, the, that's the, the other argument that I, I cannot stand to hear. Is like, oh, well, we've always done things this way. Like, okay, well, for the longest time, people used horses to get around. Does that mean we don't use cars? Like, does that mean we shouldn't use cars because people have been mm. taking horses the whole time? I mean, we haven't had computers for more than, what, like 50 years? So, what should we do everything by hand? You're just like that's the the dumbest argument. You're it's, just it's anti-worker so worker on worthless. Race. Slavery was quite the rage for quite a while. Why did we stop? It was so efficient, right? Oh yeah, totally. You yeah. Know, any of those days, any any anything. But who will pick the cotton? It's not. Yeah, but who it, will pick? That's the one cotton? of the major first like things that slapped me upside the head. <laughs> like during this whole like when I learned about this stuff first was who will pick the cotton because the first time you hear it, you're like, uh, and then you really think about it and you're like, wait a second. I've actually thought who will make, who will build the roads. It's no different than who will pick the cottons. They're both built by slaves essentially. 
Actually, I, I, I mentioned that uh, very argument just today when I was at um, this place. I go to my kids. Uh, for, they take some some like uh, science classes and some math classes like for homeschoolers. And I was talking to this woman that, that's also on my emailing list, and she was asking about anarchism and voluntarism, and I was explaining the basics to her, and, and I, I mentioned that very thing, like abolitionists in the 19th century um, opposed chattel slavery on moral grounds alone, and the slave masters would often say, well, if you take away the slaves, who's going to pick the cotton? And so they're not foreseeing the rise of the industrial machines. They don't know that's going to happen, but they're like, I don't care who's going to pick the cotton. It's just wrong to own human beings, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, exactly. <laughs> so our arguments from antiquity always fall on their face because history is replete with examples of how innovation and progress have obviated the need for all of these systems of authority and rulership. As there, ha, whenever a society has a system of slavery, there's always been an accompanying system of the state, right? Yeah. Okay, like there's never been – I mean, I'm sure there's like tribal instances of like one tribe completely enslaving another one, but that's essentially the state as well. So like they're the same thing, slavery and statism. Like you cannot have the state without enforcing slavery in my opinion. And you can't have slavery without the state there to enforce it. Like the first police in America were slave patrols. Like mm. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Find me an instance other than like some small scale like Ooga Booga taking over another Ooga Booga. Ooga Booga. I, I mean, <laughs> that's wow. Racist. That, that's, a, that's a technical economic God, racist. Really. Well, how is it racist? I, I specified you, you, no, you can find no, that in nothing. You, you can find that Mises dot com. <laughs> oh, Some Amazonian tribe takes over another Amazonian tribe. Uh, you know, that's so not that's, what I'm so talking about. So that's what you here. think of Amazonians is their Ooga Boogas. That's what <laughs> I'm getting. Know. So when you think of Ooga Booga, you picture like Amazon tribes. Like mud people, basically, wow. is what you're getting at. Dave. <laughs> I don't know. Evolving man. quickly. Dave, I'll stop. Is, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm talking about there's I, – I, I can't no, I, off I the top you. of my head think of a system of slavery that existed sans state. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's an inefficient – Ooga Boogas are not. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an inefficient that, institution that uh, re relies on yeah, state subsidies to, because – you know, it's like it's like what, what's more efficient to force people by by violence to work or to compensate them and trade with them? <laughs> what's more efficient? Yeah, you know, I mean, to well, to be to be fair, I don't think you could really qualify like small tribes as state back before we had larger organizations and groups of people. But I understand what you're saying. Like without the complicit um, approval of the entire group, slavery would just not happen. Well, I mean, well, yeah, I, I technically would... one person exerting force on another person is then temporarily becoming the state oh, because they are trying to monopolize force in a geographical location. So, I mean, technically. No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't trying. I didn't want to go down necessarily that rabbit hole, but yeah, you're, <laughs> you're not. You're not incorrect. I'm just. I don't even know about that. I don't because again, we we have very different definitions of the state. I, I see. I see the state. Perhaps as, the state is a belief system, as far as I'm concerned. I think it's a geographical monopoly on it's, it's, coercion and I, well, I think we can all it. agree that it's not actually real; that it's just a yeah, it's a it's a justification. It's a don't awry. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, I like Mark Stevens' de uh, definition, which is the uh, you know, state doesn't exist; it's just men and women with guns forcing you to pay them. Yes. Uh, and, yes. Um, you know, or or just the belief in authority, belief that some people have um, moral exemptions to morality that other people do not have. So. Uh, in that sense, statism is a state of mind, and freedom as well is a state of mind, right? So when people say, you know, are you ever going to see freedom? Well, you know, you live, you live free, you exude freedom, you know, you, you, you demonstrate it by your very actions in your life, the way you raise your kids, the way you transact in your business, that's what freedom is, you know? And um, if people try to, try to uh, steal from you and rob you and assault you, then, you know, you have every right to defend yourself, so that's... You know, um, I, I think I think uh, Albertus Cam Camus. Uh, Camus. That's Camus, right. right. I was he just said, thinking uh, of the same. Thing. Yeah, yeah. He's like, live, Campus. live. So, what, what's the, the only response? The only way to deal with an, an unfree, unfree world, world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. That's yeah. that's what it was. I love that. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's uh, a great quote, and I mean, it's a hundred percent true. Like that's it. It starts with you. I mean, you, we can talk about how you know we need to build momentum for these things and we need to spread the message but ultimately it really 
if you want to live free, that's entirely on your shoulders. You're, you will be as free as you want to be. Absolutely. Or yeah. you can afford to be, really. Well, as yeah. you as you determine, you can afford to be. Well, I, I, yeah, I think that's much more accurate because I mean we've talk, yeah. we've talked about that plenty on. Yeah, and that's before. and that's why I went back and corrected myself. No, no, because it's, it's not. It's. No, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was going to say because it's not necessarily like because uh, I mean all, all of us want to be free. Like I don't think any of us want to live under the yoke of the state. But at the same time, the level of risk that you're willing to undertake is entirely a value judgment that sits True, in the individual. Right. Definitely. Like nobody else can make that judgment call for anybody else. Oh, so sure. it's it's how how free you can afford to be in that moment. Yeah, I think you got to find any crack of, cracks of freedom that you possibly can, but also you have to be mentally unenslaved as well. You have to dechain your mind from statism. Yeah, which is always the first step. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mo- most people, aside from you know, I guess quote unquote criminals who are breaking specific laws, uh, most people aren't in that mind don't aren't anywhere near that mindset and aren't considering just saying no i i want to be free they don't you know they'll put up they'll put up with what's in front of them instead so yeah obviously the first step is recognizing all this stuff then once you get there i mean like like i said with uh, andre i mean that's I, I agree with your clarification because yeah it's we've talked about it before it's you know ben, uh, risk benefit you know all the time you gotta mm-hmm. you gotta weigh it out i mean I will agree with you that it isn't anybody's place to decide for someone else how much risk they they can and should take. Um, but that doesn't stop me from being a judgmental prick about it sometimes and saying, listen, I really think that a lot of people take advantage of this and don't do anything about it and just bitch about the state and say, oh, the state's in my way for this and the state's or the or government or whatever term they use. It's in my way. I can't do anything about it. And then mm. I, you know, and then that type of stuff irritates me on a personal level, and I recognize that it's personal. It's an emotional thing for me. I understand that. I don't have a, I don't have a logical argument against them. It's purely emotional when I say, "Listen, I'm out here risking a whole bunch of shit." You know, there's really a lot of lot. That, I run into so many people who just talk a great game about this and what what they would like to see, and and they're they're great at theorizing, but when it comes to actually putting anything into play, they're not willing to take any chances, and it's kind of curious yeah. to me. Because I don't understand, you know, because I don't really think I've come across too many people who don't willingly break certain laws or regulations because they think they're stupid. Not for any, you know, r- regular everyday people who still, you know, for whatever yeah. whatever level are. I drive through red lights sometimes. It's, it's a hard thing, right? Because, like, we're not this huge giant collective and we're not trying to build a huge giant collective for the means of getting something collectively done, Right. We're all trying to get everyone to wake up and realize they're an individual and, and they should act like it. So it's really hard to get a big movement going and take action outside of, you know, philosophizing and spreading the, the message uh, any way you can, like taking actual direct uh, action to, to take down the state because – you're one person. You can easily be removed uh, from society. I mean, the CIA could probably kill 10,000 people a day and no one would even know. So, I mean, it's really hard to, to sit here and say people should be taking action when the path is very unclear, and I think you have to choose your own path. Well, absolutely, you know? but I but I, I think you're talking two different things there. I'm not talking about taking collective action. I'm talking about individuals. Just there's so many different things that people could be doing. You don't even yeah. not everybody has to be doing the same thing. But there, I, I was I was referring more to the people who I run into, like I said, who have ideas, have things they they think you know when they when they talk about how they would live if they were freer, if this stuff wasn't mm-hmm. in the way, they don't. And then when pushed, it's like, well, why aren't you trying to accomplish some of this now? I continually run up against, well, I can't do it because of the government in this instance or because it's illegal or because they have a regulation. It's like, well, okay, yes, there are these things there, but there's a lot of these these quote-unquote chances that you can take that are not as big as a risk as most people would think. They just it's, – right. it's being conditioned to fear. Which is what this all comes down to. It's that's what the whole risk reward thing comes down to in this situation. The reason most people choose uh, choose not to take the risks is because of this ingrained fear of what will happen to them if the state government whatever gets a hold of them because of the, any quote unquote wrongdoing they were you know a party to. And they don't care how yeah. scared you are or, or how much you hate them or how much you think you want to do against the state. As long as you keep paying and shut up. When they demand it, they don't care. 
Yep. Yeah. Uh, they, they really right, do. right. Yep, right. That, that reminds me of a uh, a quote. I think it was Thomas Haig, some, some like uh, secretary of something. Uh, it said in the eighties, is like let them protest and march all they want as long as they pay their taxes. I was on a, <laughs> I was on a Tom Woods episode recently, wasn't it? <laughs> was it? I don't know. But, I, I think so. I think so. Oh, I was like, but, uh, yeah. I thought that's where you got it from. <laughs> it's like imagine no, I, if you had this huge <laughs> plantation, right? And you had a bunch of slaves there, and all they did was say, I hate this, I hate this, but they still went to work every damn day. <laughs> right. Not yeah. fight, didn't, didn't say nothing, wouldn't give obeyed shit. completely, except for they just bitched about it constantly. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to change anything because they're essentially paying their taxes by doing the labor. Even if they, even if they regularly held a protest but still continued to work anyway, like if you know they got up and complained for a little while but then it went right back to doing what they were doing, same effect, which is – why I always say that, you know, extrapolate that out to like the bigger, you know, from a plantation to a nation. And, you know, you have the same thing where it's just they, the government loves acts of civil disobedience because it's not really getting anything done. People are getting up there voicing their opinion, but then they'll still accept being robbed. They'll still accept people being thrown in cages over, you know, arbitrary whims of politicians and lobbyists. Uh, and and they'll still accept the you know bombing of brown people and well people of ever of all colors all around the world and you know they'll still accept all of it even after doing all that complaining and even if they get one little thing changed that they think they have some victory the state doesn't care the government doesn't care because they just keep marching on because it just they they love that they they, they yeah yeah that. like I have a, a point here. I, I made this simple observation during the primaries of this uh, big you know, presidential election in the United States we've had recently. Rand Paul got a, a group of volunteers to call one million people in like a week in Iowa. Okay, Imagine if those, those one million people that were called were just told, hey, why don't you grab a search engine or Google real quick and just type in the word volunteerism and just read everything <laughs> you can and just hung up. Seriously. Just cold call people, hey, why don't you Google volunteerism? Hang up. That would have had more of an effect for freedom than calling people, telling them to go vote for Rand Paul, who had no shot in winning anyways. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That Just something gives like that. me an idea. Well, maybe more people will get the idea and start doing it. Uh, yeah, that reminds me of um, you know, when people – when they understand the idea that taxation is theft – and and then they like you know they resign themselves and they say well what can I do you know it's good to work and I and I tell them um, during um, Nazi Germany um, you know you had the order followers who were doing all the violence but really what what empowered and funded them was the everyday German taxpayer that went to work and paid his taxes because really without that <laughs> nothing could have been done nothing could have been funded uh, without their willing consent to this system. Right, um, they would have been crippled. We saw what happened. He had to print money and collapsed his uh, government. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was they strapped, couldn't pay the taxes he debt. needed. <laughs> w wonderful, uh, wonderful example of hyperinflation for the uh, for the history books. Uh, but, yes. but unfortunately, people people still didn't learn their lesson. Unfortunately, that's that's fine. We just got to get the right color person to have socialism behind them, and everything will be fine, right, Danilo? <laughs> well, it's actually funny you guys mentioned this because, and I and I I have recently kind of uh, brought this topic up uh, in a couple of conversations. Um, in 1989, when the Romanian Revolution happened, they forcibly like they captured Ceausescu, who's the communist dictator, and his wife, who was just an awful human being and pretty much deserved to die as well. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to make bones about it. They were horrible human beings, and I'm the world is a better place without them. But the interim government that was formed immediately in their wake was made of second tier communist members hmm. mm -hmm. and they won free elections for like i think four election cycles before hmm. an oppositional party which was still kind of just like socialist but not quite hardline yeah. socialist like ceausescu was with his cult of personality he's basically a stalinist so rather than i mean they they kicked him out and they got rid of the stalinists but they replaced him with not Stalinist socialists. So <laughs> I, if history is any indication, people tend to not learn their lesson. They'll, they, I mean, they'll, they'll get rid of like the, the horror, the really, really horrible things. But I mean, compared to the really horrible things, the horrible stuff isn't quite so bad. So There's only it's one not political that bad. spectrum right now. You're either a liberal 
fascist or a conservative fascist. You're you're a fascist. You're just uh, the, socialism doesn't exist, and neither does communism. Like those those are farces used to get people to vote for certain things and believe that certain things are going to happen after certain people get voted in. But fascism is the only thing that happens after people get elected. De facto, look it up. Look up the definition of fascism, and then look at the results of what happens. It, it, I'm so sick of of collectivist ideologies. I am destroying too. our humanity. Too. That's what it does. It destroys our humanity. It takes it away from us. I'm so sick of it. Right. Yeah. You know, you know Andre. Interesting uh, um, mention about Ceausescu. That kind of hits home because my wife is Romanian. She grew up in communist yeah, Romania. Yeah. You told me. You told me. I did. I did. Okay. And uh, and she experienced a little bit of that, and her mother experienced more. And I like to get their opinions of it. And it's interesting when you hear people who grew up in communism what they thought of it. Um, some people. Oftentimes, who had the the government jobs, they liked it and they found it very cushy <laughs> and nice. <laughs> you know, her mother worked in the railroad, and um, <clears throat> you know, their 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 um, reflections on it was like, you know, everybody shared. You know, you knew your neighbor. You would ask sugar, and they would give you sugar, and everybody had the same amount of money. And yeah, until and, everybody <laughs> ran out of sugar, and they had to wait in lines to get them. Yeah, it's, right, it's right. Grand. <laughs> and now we well, have all these yeah. choices, and it's horrible. And there's there's starvation, there's poverty, and nobody there was no unemployment, and there's no poverty. But slowly, as I've I've gotten to know and Monica, she slowly understood that um, you know the state is not just about giving you sugar and flour. <laughs> like, that's not the purpose of the state, is to give you sugar and flour. <laughs> that's not what Ceausescu was there to do. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it's really about, okay, you know, you had, okay, you knew your neighbors, and you had, you could share amongst each other, and everybody made the same. But the question was, why? The, the why question is never asked or answered. It's just, oh, well, things were so much better. And that was... And when I spoke to my parents about it, because my parents grew up in it, they lived it, you know, they were mm. born in the 60s, mm. um, and so they lived through it, and they lived through the really dark economic period mm. immediately before the revolution in the, the late 70s, early 80s, mm. and the, it's, the why was never asked until things got really bad, and then suddenly everybody started questioning the why. Like, why were things this way? Why are we in bread lines? Why are people threatening us for not wanting to deal with the states, you know, handing out and doling out food and supplies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And and I also have a, uh, in my uh, homeschooling group, I have one woman who's a, um, she, she was from Kyrgyzstan, um, which was a Soviet Russia. Right. And, and so her reflection about what that was like and and her family's reflection is very interesting. Uh, Again, she looks at it fondly, her and her husband, in that, like, it was capitalism that came and destroyed everything, you know, everybody, it was safe and secure in the Soviet bloc, and Stalin was such a great guy, he kept everything, oh everybody together. <laughs> I know, I know, and, and it's amazing, the, the, the layers of, of, um, Bullshit? I don't know, of illusion, yeah, delusion, yeah. That, that I cannot penetrate with this woman, because it's so emotionally, uh, sensitive for her, for me to even mention the fact that there were like gulags and there were concentration camps and there were, you know, people jailed for politically, uh, you know, unpopular opinions. And she's like, no, that's all, that's all lies that the capitalist countries made up about Stalin. I go, oh my God, I can't even, I can't even touch that topic with her. So, yeah. <laughs> the cognitive dissonance is just too strong. Oh. Well, I mean, there again, there again, if you have experienced something extraordinarily awful, the not quite so awful, but still awful stuff, yeah, it's not bad. I, I can get behind that. That's, and, and it, that's what and it boils down to. And then another, another way I, I think about that is a slave that's born into slavery does not know what freedom is, has no um, reference, point of reference. Like if you tell a slave that, you know, you, you can work and earn money. He's like, what's money? <laughs> you know, there's, there's just a complete ignorance about a different world. So how can you even talk about that with somebody who's never even known that? Right. Right. Like, right. So exactly. That's the other thing. Well, and going back to what we were saying about slavery being a, a, a state institution, the only way I can see it not being that case is if it's generational slavery. If it's, if it's enforced by like a small community of people, which I guess you could, you could, hate, but I mean that's that's how that happens. If you're born and raised a slave, if that's all you ever know, and that's all that anybody ever tells you, 
that's how your mind is going to be. You will not know anything yeah. else. It'll be like that's Plato's true. cave. Mm, so the minute right, you're presented right. with freedom, you're like, I don't know what this is. This is horrible. Like, right, I, right. you mean <laughs> I have to to to. You mean I'm not going to have a place to sleep? I'm not going to be given food? I have to, um, to find right. these things? What's, this is what's horrible. Why would you want this? Uh, on the Shawshank Redemption, the guy that uh, hangs himself after he gets out for like... Oh, uh, Brooks. Right, Brooks, right, yeah. right. Brooks syndrome. Yeah. Yeah, it's like um, I, I, I posted a, um, a cartoon a while ago of... Uh, and you see a bird in a cage, and then the bird... Um, uh, right, free bird, the, the free bird comes to the window and, and, and the bird in the cage is like, you know, I'm so happy. I got everything. I got shelter. I got food. I got water. My master takes care of me. And the bird uh, uh, outside is like, but you can't fly. <laughs> right? So, so yeah. the, the bird born in a cage does not know what flying means. <laughs> which is very exactly. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. It's all a perspective thing. Yeah. It's a forced perspective. Yeah. Um, so, so that was. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> Mary Woolworth. <laughs> Mary, yeah. That's Mary Woolworth. Going back to what we were talking about. <laughs> what um, has been up to? But uh, let's see. Let's, let's see. Uh, I've had uh, a guy, um, uh, Tim Brochu from the uh, An Architecture podcast. I heard about that through Tom Woods. Uh, that guy was fascinating. Um, like, who's a you know? So, so looking at anarchism, he's focusing on it from the. Um, yeah, you know, from the engineering architecture perspective, like, like you know, people say, you know, how would the roads be built? How would, how would we have sewage? How would we have water? You know, if it's not monop- the utilities are not monopolized, and he, he gives really great, um, concrete explanations with that, and uh, that's wonderful, wonderful to hear that. Sure, well, that's important because, like you said, that question gets asked a lot, so. Somebody's got to be working on that stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, I, f- I feel like my focus is more on the philosophy, the morality, and the economics aspect, mm-hmm. and and uh, and so I, you know, I readily, um, uh, I say, defer to him because that's his specialty. As being uh, him and his brother are en- they're an engineer and an architect, so they that's their that's their uh, strength, right? So um, so yeah, I'm, 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 I was happy to talk to him. And uh, and I also talked to Rob Hustle recently. Um, he uh, he he on his new his new music video, the uh, Good Cops, um, and uh, that was fascinating. That's <laughs> the first time I talked to him, and uh, I discovered I also discovered that he used to do stand-up comedy as well. So pretty oh, cool. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, we have that oh, in common as I th- well. I thought I thought you had him on when he did his first song. You never had him on. No, before. no. I tried to get him on a while ago, but uh, it was really difficult to get a hold of him. And um, yeah, you know, he didn't go to um, Anarcho Pulco this year. He went last year, I think. Um, so it, it, I think he's actually working on some some film, some like yeah, some some kind of film. And so I might get him back on when he's finished with that to help him promote that. So interesting cool stuff. Yeah, it was he, he he made a name for himself. What was his first video? This is what happens when you call the cops, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, for anybody. Yeah, I think yeah, millions I and song. millions of views. I think. Well, yeah, because that's a message that that particular message can go out to more than just anarchists. Right. That you know. That's yeah. Like, Broader audience. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's why, like, you know, all, all the different songs from the was it the late eighties, early nineties. You know, when was NWA's? I don't even remember. Fuck the police. When was that? Eighty-eight. I don't. Jeez, God, it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all you know. You were in your uh, what? You were in your high uh, graduating high school then. Yeah, exactly. I'm not that old, you fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Anyway, I don't. I, I don't remember the exact things. But yeah, those those will reach a much broader audience. You know, tons of people from all different demographics got in on that because there's plenty of people who have had bad interact even even people who would still be considered statists in like most other aspects of their lives plenty of those people have had negative interactions with the police and mm. can understand that sentiment you know and 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 that and with the with the you know the rise of the internet and the fact that you know these videos are plastered everywhere all the time i can't imagine there's too many people that are spend any significant amount of time on the internet over the course of a week haven't seen at least one of those by now <laughs> you know right. yeah there can't be too many people that have managed to avoid them for that long so yeah it, it, it was what do they call them like police brutality porn or something like that yeah something well yeah. It's, i mean I, I don't i don't watch them anymore it just it, it, 
There's I so much. Were, I think they were literally trying to cause a civil war between BLM and the uh, the police, and that all this armament of them has just been a big ramp up for that. And I, I think Trump, Trump getting Trump. elected stopped it. Honestly, I do. I'm being dead serious. Like, if you hand on whatever you want me to swear on, seriously. <laughs> Well, you don't need to swear on anything for your opinion. I just don't think, <laughs> think you know. about it. Think about what, how well, it was I mean, feeling I have, for was, a minute. I have it was feeling it, like dude. there was a huge ramp up there for a minute. Wait, Notice which, there's not been any BLM riots. Which BLM riot are you talking about? Black Lives Matter. Okay. A I complete so Soros front group. Proven. Okay. Yeah, but, I was about to say, their funding sources, it, it's not even in question anymore. And the I, same people that Soros work for, the Fed and the CIA and the U.S. government work for, so... Well, I mean, it was orchestrated. Well, yeah, I understand. I, I understand that that's definitely more than possible at, <laughs> on on every conceivable level at this point. I'm just, I don't think, I, I don't think there's ever a, a, an actual push to try to force a civil war. I don't think that would that because that doesn't necess, that doesn't really benefit any of them. That cost re- that'll, organization that, always benefits. That'll co- no, that'll co- that'll co- well, it'll it'll benefit it'll benefit it'll benefit certain people, but not all the people, and not enough that they'd be willing to push it. And that's also a really hard sell <laughs> to try to force that. Well, even even amongst the people that are supposed to be making those moves and yeah. doing stuff like that, it's it's really hard. It's just a thought. So so on so the topic of Trump, uh, how many of you voted for him? I, I don't. <laughs> That was, a, that was a rhetorical question. I know, I know. <laughs> no, no, I no. Vote, I w- actually, I did vote. I walked in there and wrote in Danilo Cuellar and walked right out. <laughs> I, 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 I walked right out. I know you've been going. Oh, yeah. I had to pick. If I had to pick a president, oh. it would have been Danilo. <laughs> in my in my uh, in my homeschooling circles, I'm surrounded by uh, Democrats, socialists, Bernie Sanders supporters. Oh, and, sweet Jesus! <laughs> oh, Golly, yeah, perfect. And um, and so and they were all like. Like you know how what was that? Um, there was like a, a mental illness uh, after the election. After he he was he was uh, elected, that people they that, they make up a new mental illness like for people post election election Trump uh, trauma syndrome or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> uncontrollable crying. It's serious. Like people in my group, they had that uncontrollably crying. I couldn't believe it. My God. I'm like, yeah, because that, they is, felt is like that the not world the was ending because their guy wasn't winning. It's the same thing when uh, your team doesn't win uh, in football or whatever. Well, you no, this is this is a little <laughs> different. The the people that took it to that extreme, the, the level of delusion is different. Yeah. I've, oh, yeah. Well, no, no, yeah, yeah but I was because I've met, you know, I I have met some of these people too, and they do exist. Yeah. I knew, I knew a couple like. I've, I think I've spoken about it on the show before. Right after the election, I was in, I was all of a sudden in contact with a male liber- liberal friend of mine who I haven't spoken to in years, <laughs> who was, who was pretty much in the verge of tears over the Bernie thing. Ooh. So you know, like I, I I've wow. met people that are that take it to this extreme, but it they're so mm-hmm. like it's it's not just it's not just the loss. It's because the, at least the people that I've come across and the the other ones out there that you see the videos of is that they all they all seem this way. It's that it's not just that they, that their person lost. It's the fact that they believe all the insane propaganda about mm. Trump, and they actually think like there was people that I saw like there was different uh, different places that ran pieces you know, over the over the past couple of months since the election, checking in with people who had like really believed that the you know the uh the death camps were coming and that people were gonna be getting booted out of the country. And Trump was a Russian agent. Yeah, look just like every like every crazy rumor, they all like these type of people that got that invested that they're crying on the drop of a hat over this stuff, they really believe these things. They really believe that he it was anti me of that meme I made. Remember that, that chick that was yelling after Trump won yeah. at the inauguration, yeah. going, ah! <laughs> I made that meme that says, when an orange-haired billionaire takes over your God. It was just, I thought that was the most yes. apropos it was. description it was of, of the poignant. election. That was what happened. An orange-haired billionaire took over the liberals' God. <laughs> it was No, it was poignant, and you, you're absolutely right. And I think that's 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 what it came down to, is they treat the state like essentially a deity it, it'll provide the state will provide dude they have to say prayers to hugo chavez in venezuela still and i'm all for oh that. my god okay wow. they have to say yeah. prayers they go to like hugo chavez churches they have to like <laughs> oh, uh, if you don't think obama wants the same thing or ever <laughs> any of these other tyrants you're crazy this is what these people feed on 
This is their, the, everyone that has, a, you know, like that, that thing in the back of your head, person that's listening, that says, man, we really should have the state for this. They think I should have the state for me, and they don't really care about you. I mean, to, to varying degrees, I don't think every uh, leader of a state organization is, necessarily has a cult of personality, but it's definitely there. The framework is there. They're all sociopaths. I mean, that, that, that goes without saying. Well, suppose yeah, I would I would say probably at least if not all of them, uh, most of them. The the, 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 the amount that is not would be so insignificant you wouldn't report it. How about that? Yeah, there you go. It's not statistically significant. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that, that's a very good phrase. The me. level of sociopathy in politics is not statistically significant. Or, <laughs> the level of non sociopathy. <laughs> non sociopathy. Non right. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Damn it! A slight detail there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you status. I, I think that would wreck our entire argument, Dave. That, that, that <laughs> Damn it. Work. The whole show. Well, that's flip that's it. Head, that's right? it. Dave's outed himself as a status. Everybody, let's shun him. Let's point and laugh and shun. <laughs> shun the non-believer. <laughs> shun the non-believer. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? So in my group, they, they intensely um, despise Trump so much that if I start criticizing Trump, I think that's going to lead them to believe that I wanted um, <laughs> the other guy to, or, or Hillary to win. Yeah, yeah. So I don't at all. I just, I just say I don't care who sits on the throne. I'm against it. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, I don't want the throne. Well, Dismantle the throne. I don't care I, who was it. I under, I understand that. But if you're, if at least post election now, I, I have, I have found that pointing out or at least being willing to discuss the bad things that he's doing right now is actually very beneficial when talking to such people. Like that's how mm -hmm. I was actually able to make inroads yeah. with these these liberal, you know, these liberal friends of mine that I hadn't spoken to in years because they had all kind of written me off. Uh once I, you know, it was it was bad enough when I when I when I flirted with the Tea Party and then went to the libertarians, you know, that was bad enough for them. Then when I went full born, you know, full bull anarchist, they all lost their shit. And they were just like, yeah, this guy's crazy. We're out of here. But they, the ones that I started talking to again, it was interesting because it was because I was still like they had kind of, I guess they kind of expected me to just let like let off the gas or something and not go after Trump. But because I continued to hammer the things that he was doing and pointing them out like from the get go, they were just like, Wow, that's interesting. It, it, it appears that you haven't changed your message at all. You're just like exactly because I have I, a meme for you. Jeremy. I don't just care. I don't care exactly. which one it is. I, it, I don't care which side is in because it doesn't matter to me. Which to your point, Danilo, I do agree with that. But I'm able to use that now with such people, which is why I, I just I laughed every time somebody's you know I see somebody ranting about hey hey you can't reach the quote unquote collective of the left. I'm like, sure, you can't reach and, any collective. You can reach individuals, though, and that's what I do. <laughs> and, and it's amazing how people can overlook um, the atrocities of a regime because, like, let's say, for example, Trump, um, like, like, especially in the, in the homeschoolers, like, Trump, uh, he's against vaccines. Oh, that's good. And, I'm like, and in my mind, I'm thinking, well, but he's still drone bombing brown people. Oh, okay. Trump is good for business. Wait, but he's still drone bombing brown people. Trump is... <laughs> Trump is dismantling this this federal agent. Wait, but he's still drone bombing brown people. Wait, doesn't that? Don't you care about that? Yeah, I mean, he <laughs> like, could is it, day one turn off all military operations? Like, that's not a. He's the commander in chief. Like, you're you're definitely right on this, Danilo. <laughs> like, how can you overlook that? I don't, I don't understand. Like, oh, it's good well, for war business. is the health oh of the God. state, man. They got right. those engines pumping. Well, Imagine if Trump g goes against the military industrial complex. Bye bye, Cynthia. But that's every every speech he does. He goes, guys, I'm going to rebuild the army. I'm going to increase funding. I mean, what does that mean? That means more money's going to military contractors. Fact. Well, of course. But the so, the reason the, the the answer to your your well your kind of almost rhetorical question, then, I was like, why do they you know why do they go there with that? Well, because that's all they you know going back to what we were talking about earlier about kind of like you know not knowing any different because that's the environment you grow up in well there's tons mm -hmm. of people especially the millennials they've known nothing but like hard like not just war in the sense that you know what is that meme that always gets floated around the fact that the the US has been at war for like 227 of the 238 or whatever it is mm -hmm. years right, right, along right. those lines uh, right. whatever it's up, actually up to now i guess the numbers have changed a little bit but uh you know the fact that anybody pretty much post the first Iraq war, you know, Gulf, the, was it Gulf War? Was that 91, 92, 93, somewhere in there? I can't yeah. remember exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, back, you know, pretty much since then, 
because then you had, you know, with Clinton, you had Kosovo and, and what was the other one? Um, Somalia? Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, hasn't it, it hasn't stopped. Like, no, no, all Somalia the past is still couple of being bombed and shot up by Americans. Well, no, the, the, soldiers well, no that, uh, yeah, right that, that's true, too, but I was just talking about in general, like, those two, and then it just happened, and then 9-11, like, every, like, it's just been nonstop. Like, that's all these past couple of generations know. So they just, a lot of people can just kind of write that off with as, well, that's kind of like one of those things that's always there, like we were talking about much earlier, like, oh, it's just kind of accepted. We've always been at war with Eurasia. Yeah, it's, the, the so, it's, a, it's a short-term, <laughs> right. a short-term appeal to We've antiquity. We've always been at war with Not really globalist. antiquity, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, been, I've been wanting to make that meme for a while. Well, I, I, um, I said that when they started talking about, when, when there was talks about uh, Russia and, and the United States kind of teaming up to, to prevent China from becoming a bigger power and stuff like mm-hmm. that, it's like, well, yeah, of course, we're, we've always been, we've always, and I said it, I said it right away, we've always been at war with East Asia because <laughs> that's just the way <laughs> people right. are going to, that's yeah. right. I got, I got a meme idea for you, Jeremy. It's a, a, the, the shattered out picture of Trump, and it, it's a Pokemon frame, and it says, who's that president? And then below it's got your picture, and it just says, I don't care. <laughs> That's right. That's great. Oh, speaking of speaking of memes with your picture in it, Jeremy, that shit for the uh, the Church of the Immaculate Procession, <laughs> you and Dave, that is solid gold. Yes, that, that is. Uh, that was fantastic. Did you make it the profile pic of the? I <laughs> made it. I, it is the profile pic of the Church of the Immaculate Con- uh, Oh, I didn't see oh that man, that is fantastic. Okay. You haven't it, seen. You that? have got to see it. Our our, my, our our friend uh, Travis McQuivy, who goes by the name, who's going by the name of Mac Fiend right now on Facebook, <laughs> uh, but he's a uh, He's a huge fiend fan, and he's been a, he's been like the resident fiend memeologist for a long time, and helping out with stuff like that. And uh, right. him, he, him, and I have gone back and forth with memes for quite a while now. But he's I, I always bow down to him because he's got better Photoshop skills than me. But yeah, he made that he made that for us and, sh- and shared it, and <laughs> I, I thought it was quite funny. Yes, it's it's Dave and I, I proselytizing for the church. Today. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> it's like mad fiend tagged me. I'm like, who is this? And I see it. I'm like. Holy shit! This is epic. I love the faces he chose because I look so. I yeah, look, that's I what look I'm so saying. They're excited. perfect. I look so excited. You know, for anybody. We can here. see the whites around your irises. You look like so. It you has look to be insane. this picture for the podcast. <laughs> and then Dave's just like laughing in the like laughing on off to your side, just full throat laugh. It's just it's great. <laughs> God is it good. Well, that's the Dave bellowing pick that I've used for many a meme. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. 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 Uh, but it is a good one, but yeah, it's pretty funny. But yeah, for anybody who hasn't seen it, it's, it's, it's Dave's, Dave's head and my head on two little, you know, two basically, you know, like Jehovah's Mormons. Witnesses or Mormons. That's what it is. Mormons showing up at somebody's door to preach the word. And uh, have you have you Googled volunteerism? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, it's Here's a copy of the Anatomy of the State. See ya. <laughs> yeah, somebody asked if we hand out flyers. I said no. D- Dave just carries a bag full of uh, copies of Anatomy of the State. He throws them at him as we run as we get run off their porch. He's like, here, just read this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, well, on the that. bright side, well, on the bright side, using Anatomy of the State, you can use that as a defensive weapon since it's large enough and heavy enough. <laughs> oh, it's actually really, really, really small. Anatomy. Of the yeah, State but it's bigger than a pamphlet. So, you know, <laughs> you could roll it up and use there's it as a club. A, an, if there's you have a pamphlet to. version of Anatomy of the State. We need to get Andre to rewrite it at strictly a sixth grade reading level. Oh, and then Jesus I can go put it in everybody's mailbox. <laughs> I'll, I'll put uh, you average, know what? I would be willing to do that. I would level. I would be willing to donate my time and effort to make that happen. I yes. will make that a reality. That would be great. Well, I'll, I'll send you the pamphlet. That's something we could. Do that's it. something I could put. I, I keep saying I want to put one of those free little libraries out in front of my. Because I mean, house. he says. I'll put the, I'll put some of those in there. It'd be great. Here, take this. Rockport is very. Um, Matt, he he just gets very verbose sometimes. That I, I think it goes a lot over a lot of people's heads. Yeah, yeah, he does. So, so, Jeremy, whatever happened to our? Um, we were going to go in the city and do some uh, man in the street. Uh, oh well, talk we can in never, Manhattan. We can, we can never manage. We can never manage to, to work out times to do anything else. <laughs> Jeremy, I, mean, heck, I, every I tried. To I tried to get Danilo to come up here next cause next next week, and uh, <laughs> just like he's like, "What well, can you do with that?" It's like, "No, I'm working." And it's because uh, in Danilo's world, he doesn't understand like you know work during the course of the day because uh, <laughs> he's exactly. with his kids all day. So I'm, it's like I'm, I'm the homeschooling father. Exactly. What's, uh, what's work? <laughs> He gets arrested every time he goes to New York City. He can't come. Yeah, I, I really do don't don't I really don't want to go. I mean, I did say I was going to the last the last time I was going to go close to New York City was before uh, 
good old Shia LaBeouf moved the cops his. Have him alert. Shia LaBeouf have alert. before he moved his because he had the the his um, live stream thing that just got busted. You know, got got uh, tracked down by the 4chan guys, which was hysterical. By the way, use it. What did they oh, say? They the used. Main. Yeah, God what? was it. That made my week. They used. That, but no, I take that back. That made my month. That was that was <laughs> that was spectacular. He put it out on a farm. He put the flag out on a farm. If people don't know, he put this camera up on a he will not divide us flag on a farm in Tennessee and 4chan found it out through watching the live stream through flight patterns and astrological stars they geolocated <laughs> the place someone jumped the like fence went in there swapped it out with a maga hat a make america great hat <laughs> and, and left yeah, it was it was beautiful. It was it was masterful, and the fact that they were able, they were able to do that is just genius. But that's what, what I was saying is before he moved it there, I think it was in New Mexico before that, and before that it had been in New York. It started in Queens um, at one of the uh, I think it was in Queens. Yeah, he he isn't a good enough troll. If I'm Shia LaBeouf, I'm putting it up on a green screen, and that green screen is going to change locations every 48 <laughs> hours just to f- screw everyone up. What it's showing, you know, like it'd be over here one week. One, it's People don't think. They're not. <laughs> you know. Themselves. You know what. You know what. Though to be fair, even if Shia LaBeouf did that, I have enough confidence now in 4chan to think that they would still be able to figure out where it is. <laughs> well, yeah, even if it's like go, a they would go there somewhere. and it would be empty-handed, right? Just, and then no, 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 no. They would oh, find. The they would find him. Yeah, they would find him. They would yeah. hack into the IP that's. that's <laughs> yeah, they'd the find a way that, just to just to mess with them. I, I wouldn't put it past them to be. Well, really it was uh, somebody. Somebody put out a meme from. Uh, it was a. Uh, uh, Screenshot from Reddit, and they were talking about how like Shia LaBeouf is going to contract with SpaceX to like fly it out to the moon, <laughs> to the dark side of the moon, and then 4chan's going to figure out it's on the dark side of the moon. <laughs> and then three <laughs> months later, th- well, no, three months later they'll ha- they'll uh, generate enough funds to to create and build their own rocket ship to send somebody up to the moon <laughs> to troll it, and then they'll just like. It's They'll totally. just like uh, like island hop across the solar system as Shia LaBeouf keeps moving it farther and farther out, <laughs> and eventually like 4chan and Shia LaBeouf are going to be the reason that we eventually leave the solar system. <laughs> Trolling, that yeah, is. that's probably much. This this pretty much going to be the future of humanity right now. Uh, who can troll the other the best and make them look the shittiest? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Competition is good. Competition is great. Competition builds. It's moving from rifles to memes, which I'm fine that's with right. that. Well, if, if, that's, yeah, me too. If, yeah. That, if that type of insane competition gets us out of the solar system, then I'm all for it. I am. <laughs> exactly. I want to see that happen. Meme us to another planet. <laughs> Carl Sagan never saw it coming. <laughs> oh, I can do Carl Sagan too. Oh gosh. I'm Carl Sagan. Um, no. Shia LaBeouf started what he didn't know. Was humanity's general? I got nothing. Yeah, I was gonna say that doesn't <laughs> expanse into the solar system. Not, that's not doing. I can't funny. do it, and I haven't done Carl Sagan. I was gonna say stick, I stick to your who age, I can stick do. to your AJ, man. Just I can't forget <laughs> who I can do, man. And I can really do Carl Sagan. Like I'll do it next episode. Just okay. give me a few. <laughs> I remember. I remember clearly your your Jesse Ventura. Uh, <laughs> oh. Well, the last time he did it, it like it it morphed into Alex uh, Jones, and then he tried to do oh, them both together. And it turned into the well, same that's what, thing. well, that's what I said. I said he, he should never because he tries to do that, and once he tries to talk back and yeah. forth as both of them, he start they start they're, blending they're together. They're too raspy. Well, yeah, like, they're, they're very them, similar. Um, when you hear them separated by time, like when, when you don't hear them like back to back, it's like wow. But. Um, yeah, if I had a script and I had like a, an Alex script, I could read it, and then I could read a Jesse script in response <laughs> to all those, and then you could just put them together just, just and it'd be hilarious. Together, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> well, get to work, Dave. <laughs> oh man, I wish. Well, well, you're supposed to you're supposed to be you know on that with tinfoil wars. That would be perfect for that. Yeah, I'm thinking about just contacting Alex Jones and seeing if he wants to buy it, so nothing bad happens with tinfoil wars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nonsense. We just got we just got to get started. and We got to get the ball rolling. That's all. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, nice. Um, nice. Stephen Molinox is going to be next. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think I think uh, why not Stephen Molly? Yes. <laughs> what, no, what's the guy? Stephen Molly. No. The, the, the guy Seamus uh, Coglin, who who's uh, who does the Freedom Tunes. Yeah, he's great. He he did that. You remember that video where he was um, making fun of of Molyneux? Yeah, yeah. and th- with the paper bags. Yes. And then and then he posted that I think somewhere under his Twitter or, or something like that. And then Molyneux uh, Molyneux banned him. Yep. 
Yeah, Seamus. <laughs> or blocked him or something like that. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure no, all he did. of you liked it. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> no, he did? He's been blocked because of it. I'm, I'm almost positive. <laughs> ah, who knows? Seamus is a funny guy. He's he, he's on the Freedom Fiends now, too, so I've, I've got to talk to him for a couple of shows. Also, yeah. He's, he's, put, he's been pretty um, pretty prolific on his channel. He's putting yep. out some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's he had, um, he had um, Eric, Eric July uh, for that for that one. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> It's like black people don't forget to do the laundry. We just leave it on, leave it on the floor. Or something. <laughs> yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, it just just the ludicrousy of like <laughs> political correctness right now is insanity. It, it's it's I, it's 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 dying so quickly that like even like old people are laughing at at this stuff now. They're like. I heard an old lady say, "What are you, an SJW?" to somebody else the other day. So, like, I know, like, wow. like it's the t- the cultural tides are turning. That's why I've always, since this picture became real clear for me, changed my message to you. Really need to be attacking the culture, the state, the government, the president. None of that matters. You you have to attack the culture. Yeah, that's the well. That's the only way change happens because. You know, as we know, politics is a lagging indicator of society, and society is a lagging indicator of culture. It all starts with culture. Mm-hmm. It, it, the only way you can have lasting progress in any direction is by changing culture. Yep. Yep. Wow. I think that's a perfect. I way think to we've all ran out of steam show. here at the. No, I was just about to say that's a perfect way to wrap up the show, and then you just ruined it, Dave. Thanks. Well, you can. Edit that out. <laughs> say it. Say it. it was a perfect way to wrap up and just. Edit I, I I already did, Dave. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> we'll leave it in to remind you of uh, you know when you listen back to this you'll 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 cringe and then hopefully you won't do it again. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like mm, ru- I'm past cringing at my cringing is good. <laughs> Damn it, Dave! You have to rub your nose in it like a dog. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do not. I do not. I do not agree with that practice. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, right, right. Would that be considered puppy abuse? I'm no, calling it better I know people bureau. that I know people that like to do that. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. My dog got inconveniently hurt by Jay's. Like, get out of here! All right, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. On that note. Uh, I guess we should get going. So, Danilo, this has been, it's been a lot of fun having you back on, man. It's, it was good to actually talk to you. I, I, we barely speak anymore, man. What happened, you know? What? Well, we keep in touch as much as we can. Um, life is uh, it's changing, it's different, but I'm trying to uh, keep up doing what I'm doing. And I know you guys are doing what you're doing, and that's wonderful. And I'm grateful to hear that it's still alive and kicking. And uh, I hope it continues. So, so here's to many more episodes. Yes. Yes, apply? many, many more episodes. I thoroughly enjoy being on here, so I, I would very much hope that this does not go away. Well, well in we, two we, years when we have episode 200, we'll have everyone back on and we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, we, we, we don't want, we, we weren't going to get rid of you just yet, Andre. That was, that was the other thing. We, we, I, did, I did tease that on the, web, on, the, on the Facebook page today, uh, and we did actually ask you, so I guess we could finally say this now. Uh, Andre has uh, graciously accepted to uh, join us on a more permanent basis from now on. So we've, I guess, technically finally filled the Danilo seat. Um, uh, but it, it was ine- it was inevitable. Yeah, it was. We we held out for a while, but uh, I think uh, you, you, you didn't you didn't change the uh, the wall. What was it called the cover photo on the on the seats of Liberty with all three oh, no, of our heads yet? It's you, oh you should you not check. Oh, I didn't check it recently. Office? You should go check. I it. didn't check it recently. Okay, okay, okay. I'll check it. <laughs> you got the new one. The new one. Was yes, the, there's okay. a new one up. So awesome. <laughs> it's a terrible picture. A terrible a picture, picture. Jeremy refuses to change it. It's so. a wonderful picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm officially history. <laughs> you're not history. No, it you're took... not. Get out of here. <laughs> it's, not like I'm, it's not like I'm scrubbing the old content and removing I all know, the I know, episodes I know. that you're on. <laughs> no, hey. I, I, I'm, I really appreciate Andre coming on and taking that spot. I, I, I kind of, you know, had my eye on getting Andre on the show when Danilo decided to pull away because he had the move coming up, he had all that other stuff coming up and, and wanted to pull away because he couldn't put his heart into it. And I saw Andre, I, he he puts out great content. I was like, man, this is the perfect guy to fill that Danilo spot. And I, I just, I'm glad everything has kind of lined up for you for this to happen, Andre. Yeah, and I, I mean, I say it every time you guys have me on, and I, I, I know it sounds trite at, at, one, at some point, but it really is an absolute pleasure and an honor for me personally to be on the show on a recurring basis, to be here talking with you guys and to discuss the things that we're passionate about and we care about and the things that matter to us to hopefully spread the message of Liberty to everybody else that we can get a hold of. 
So it's again, it's it's an honor to be on here, and I can't express to you how happy I am to be a permanent part of this, to be an ongoing host. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Awesome. And I, I just want to add, I'll, I'll never forget um, when uh, me, uh, me, Jeremy, and Dave were talking on a uh, was it Voxer or was it Telegram? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, but I think it was Voxer. But it started on but Voxer. D- Dave, Dave said um, he says I like I like this. I'm like Johnny Appleseed. I like to spread seeds of liberty. <gasps> That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I it's such it. a good name. It's so good. Like you couldn't you couldn't make this up again if you tried. Right. Uh, it, it I don't divine Dave Spiration, I guess. I don't Dave know. It just it, was, Dave it really was it was Dave just Vine. we were it was one of those things where it was like, Hey, anybody get a cool name and I just kept throwing them out. And eventually it got to that and it was like, Hey, you know what? That's not bad because I had a pitch behind it. But yeah. I'm glad it's lasted 100 episodes. I mean, shit, if the show ended tomorrow, it would be a success in my eyes. But uh, I, I want to keep this thing uh, continually going because I know people – our numbers are going up. I know people are listening, and yeah, they, I, that's all I need. Dave kept telling me that. I, I didn't believe my family went and looked. I'm like, oh, my God, they really have been going up. Yeah. Uh, we've, been, uh, we've, we've been doing quite well. We're making it. We're making it, man. Yeah. We're, we're doing it. Especially over the past like two or three months, we've definitely seen a, a huge surge, and it's. Uh, I mean, before that, we had some really you know great episodes that got huge numbers when we had certain guests on, but you know our our just overall numbers have been going up, 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 and it's been great. So I guess that means well, I mean, either either people are really liking it, or it's the Howard Howard Stern effect at at work where our haters are listening to us just to make fun of us or complain about us. <laughs> and in either case, I'll take either, either one. Exactly. I'll either one. I, I don't That's care because is in there taking notes on every one of them. Hey, oh yeah, so oh, yeah, the, the increase the increase in uh, listeners is all uh, CIA sock accounts. They That's all yeah, count as great. downloads. I don't give a crap. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Actually, actually, on my on my Facebook page, I got this one woman who constantly comments. And uh, and and this one guy commented under one of my videos saying, he's saying this is another guy that that thinks if you just ignore the state, it's going to disappear. And then she comments under him saying, I know, I just follow him because of the, I just want to see what crazy thing he says next. That's, <laughs> that's the only reason I follow. Him. Well, that's that's exactly what the Howard Stern is. That's what that's the line from the movie. But I don't I can't wait to see what, what he says next. <laughs> you don't say anything that crazy, dude. That's what I'm. That's what's funny. Is the I know. Is it, kind well, no, of it's not. Cr- it's not crazy. It's it to them. It's radical. And that's what it, the, yeah, these exactly. ideas are. I'm we so are far radical. down that when I look up at even just like what normal people have not, never even it's never even crossed their mind some of these things, especially like deep state stuff. And I just am like, I'm already running on all this implied stuff, and I'm trying to have a conversation with you, and you don't even know the like you don't even know the the, the what color paint is on the surface of the thing you're supposed to be scratching. Yeah, exactly. It's it, you, and it's it's incredible because every time you run into that conversation, especially with somebody who has no clue whatsoever, ha- doesn't understand any of these references, you have to just like take a step back and be like, okay, so we need to start with the alphabet, and you need to understand what these letters are, and then we Grammar, can start stringing logic, them together. Rhetoric. Exactly. It's, <laughs> Me and a friend were talking today, and we were talking about why so many people don't understand when a, f- a new philosophy comes across to their, you know, their ears or their brain or whatever, it's because most people that espouse a philosophy skipped the logic. They only know the grammar and the rhetoric. All they can do is rhetoricize the philosophy. They don't truly understand the principles or anything behind it that supports it. And so they can't clearly and honestly and emotionally defend it. All they can do is spout the rhetoric. Yeah. No, and that's 100% true. You have to get true. to a point with everything where you understand the logic behind what you're talking about. Otherwise, you say, I, this is what I've been told. I don't know. Well, yeah, <laughs> but so many people just, the first thing they're told on something, it's like, well, this is right, and they go with it. Yeah. yeah to, me, it, to me, it all comes down to basic definitions. You know, I just, when I start talking to somebody about this stuff, I say, what's, what's your definition of capitalism, of, uh, of theft, of the state, of law, of regulation, of, <laughs> of capital, you know, of free, of free markets, you know, and just from there, you can see where their mind is at. And the way they see the world, and go from there. And that's, I find that that's a really easy way to um, yeah. to um, bring them. And to that's these the first ideas. thing you should be doing, anyways, Danilo, is getting definite, getting them to define, right. so yep. you can speak on their yeah. language and their level. Even if they're socialists, talk in their terms, guys. It may pain you. And I, I mean, if you read my Facebook, you know how much I hate commies. Like <laughs> I still talk, on, I still talk in their language when I want to, when I really want to get into them. I still just speak like I'm one of them, but to my ends. And 
it's, I don't, call it whatever you want, but like if somebody only knows a certain language, I'm going to speak that language if I can. Mm-hmm. Well, try to anyway. Yeah, try to. Yes. All right. Yeah. Well. All right, now I think we've gone on a uh, exactly. long enough tangent. It's too so late, though. We, 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 we were trying to wrap up. But <laughs> before, okay, <laughs> so, I had to get Danilo on for ten more minutes, damn it. Before we, <laughs> hey, that's, that's all right. So, says the guy who doesn't have to edit the show. So before, Okay, before, yeah, let's, let's, let's call Before him. we go on any more tangents, uh, again, Danilo, this, it was great talking to you, man. Um, for anybody who doesn't know already, go check out his information at, what is it, peacefulanarchism.com? Is that your mm-hmm. website? Yep. That's where you, can, that's where you can find all his stuff. Brazzers. <laughs> um, Andre, it's, uh, it's that, good. That, that's Homeschool the alternate website. It gets, it gets redirected to Peace Money. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. <laughs> so. Can I get some ad revenue to the <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Uh, Andre, it's uh, good to officially have you on board, buddy. So, uh, thank you. Like guys. I said, it's an honor. Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege. Thank you, guys. And Dave, well. Good to have you here as always, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dave still here, Dave, unfortunately. Dave. <laughs> so one, once again, uh, th- all this stuff will be in the show notes, but once again, uh, please uh, go check out the information for the Freedom B&B the, uh, at hobosymbols.com. Uh, there is an Indiegogo campaign We're trying to get up some money to uh, get this project off the ground and running. I mean, it's already up and running, but we're trying to get it along even faster. So, you know, go check that out and... Hopefully we can make this a reality soon, and we'll, we'll uh, again hopefully have Ben Stone on next week to talk about this in further detail, which uh, should be really exciting. And all of our information can be found at theseedsofliberty.com on that crappy little website that Dave still hasn't done anything with. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. Take care. Bye. Peace. Peace. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation, and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.